Hey guys, um, I wanted to, uh, last time I was here, we was outside the building and we kind of had a couple little, you know, issues and stuff like that. So we decided to take it in time inside. I know, I know it's been a little while, um, but I want to, you know, just pick up where I left off. If you remember, the last time we had talked about, you know, restoring the hearing, if you look over here to the side, if you kind of follow me, you know, um, the last couple of, couple of videos was about restoring the hearing and, um, you know, that's why Jesus said things like, you know, those who have ears, let them hear. And that's why Jesus, when he healed Malchius's ear, you know, he, um, you know, it was about restoring the hearing, not just the physical ear being healed. We look to the physical when we should be looking to the spiritual. Another thing I want to throw in on you with that is the Bible says that, um, that Malchius, you know, um, Malchius was a priest. And also, um, he was carrying the word of the high priest to arrest Jesus. So Malchius was a priest and he was a prophet. And Malchius' name, his name means king. So Adam was the first prophet, priest, and king. And the Bible says the second man, Adam, or the last man, Adam, Yeshua, Jesus, he's a prophet, priest, and king. First he came as prophet. Uh, now he's... Uh, you know he's in uh, the most. He's in the holy place um, after the order of Melchizedek. He is the he's the king priest after the order of Melchizedek, and the Bible says soon to return as our king. So the whole deal with Peter taking out the sword and cutting off the right ear of Melchius, um, it was a picture of Adam Adam losing his hearing in the beginning, and then God restoring our hearing. So when he picked that ear up, that was amazing. And he picked that ear up and he healed his ear. It was about you know about Yeshua restoring our hearing, and now we can hear God again and be in fellowship with Him. But I want to invite you to the Citadel Church, and um, this is us right here. I'm, well, I say the Citadel Building. The church is actually, uh, you know, in the cafe over here. Um, it's a little early. We're about to get started in a little bit, but I want to shoot a few videos before we get started. If you look around, I teach from a messianic or, Ju uh, or Jesus' point of view, a messianic perspective, or just, you know, I teaching from Jesus's point of view. You kind of see some things around here. Um, you know, the candle, you know, the candlestick and, you know, right behind me in the back, you'll see the Ark of the Covenant. These are, uh, you know, these are the, um, the furniture that we built in the early part of 2000 through some dreams the Lord had showed me when he began to manifest some things. If you look over here to the left, um, to my left, you'll see the showbread table, and uh, we'll get into that later. And also, right here in the middle is the altar of incense. Um, we'll make a video on it. And behind you, which we're not going to turn around, is actually the laver, the brazen altar and the brazen laver. But what I want to do is, I wanted to just um, continue to show you things that are just like absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, and I want to talk to you about the ten generations from Adam to Noah today. I'm going to get into some other things, but... Um, you know, one of the first things the Lord had showed me was the ten generations from Adam to Noah. And studying from a Jewish perspective, I just began to, you know, look into names and numbers and kind of see what things mean. And this comes from Genesis 5. I want you to look at this. And uh, I'm kind of going to give you an explanation of it. Um, the Lord revealed uh, this to me around 2002. Um, I actually got to go and do a few radio uh, stations and I was invited to uh, speak at a few different places. and. But this is one of the first things the Lord had ever showed me. It's the ten generations from Adam to Noah. And the Bible says that Adam begat Seth, and Seth Enosh, and Enosh Kenan, and Kenan Mahahil, Mahahil Jared, Jarak, Jared Enoch, Enoch Methuselah, Methuselah Lamech, and Lamech and Noah. And the Bible says that, you know, these were the ten generations from Adam to Noah. So the first 2,000 years of man's history were actually 1,656 years from Adam to Noah, and then God destroyed the earth. We get these 10 generations, and what's amazing about it, the Lord says in Matthew chapter 24, Yeshua said, as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He also says in Proverbs 25 too, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. So I want to show you some things that are hidden. He also says in Jeremiah 33, 3, he says, Call unto me, says the Lord, and I'll show you the hidden things, the things you know not of. So what I did was, when the first thing the Lord had showed me, um, with the ten generations from Adam to Noah, you know, it says, Adam begat Seth, and Seth Enosh, and Enosh Kenan, Kenan, Mahahil, Mahahil, Jared, Jared, Enoch, 
Enoch, Methuselah, Methuselah, Lamech, and Lamech, Noah, and God, you know, flooded the earth. And it was the, the destruction of the earth, and it was the beginning of something new. And if we look at the top, Adam, his name actually means Adam. Um, he was actually taken from the red ground. And the Bible says in Romans and in Corinthians that Jesus was the, the last man, Adam. So where the first man, Adam, failed, the second man, Adam, prevailed. And the Bible also says that, you know, Jesus said, Yeshua said, he told the Pharisees and Sadducees, you search the scriptures and in them you think you have life, but there they would speak of me. So the whole Old Covenant, you know, uh, from the Torah, you know, to Psalms and the Prophets, every jot, every tittle is all about Yeshua. And I want to show you something that's hidden in here. Some of you guys might have see, saw this before, but um, I'm going to take it a little bit further. Um, we know that Adam, his name means Adam, and that means red earth. Now I'll tell you something about this red earth. The Bible says that Jesus was conceived in the town. Um, he was born in Bethlehem, but in the city of Naphtali, um, it says that, um, um, you know, the angel Gabriel came down and had spoke to uh, Mary and told her that she was going to, you know, conceive and bear a son. Well, Naphtali is actually the place of the red ground. So check this out. The very place, the Bible says that Adam, his name means Adam. So uh, he was taken from the red ground. That's the only place in Israel that they actually have red ground. So the very same place that Gabriel appeared to Mary announcing the birth or the conception of Jesus Christ in Mary's womb was the very same place that, if I could say it like this, that Yeshua formed Adam out of the dust of the ground. So the two Adams were both born born or if you want to say conceived in the very same place. So what I did was Adam, his name means Adam, which means red earth. The Bible says that Jesus or Yeshua, Yeshua just simply means that he is our salvation. He was the last man, Adam. So I went down and Seth, his name means appointed in the Hebrew. And if you remember, it says that Eve said that God has appointed her another son because Cain had killed Abel. And um, so what I did was I just went simply to a Webster's Dictionary. And I just, I looked up in Webster's, what does appointed mean? Appointed means in the Webster's Dictionary, it means to be set in a position. So here it is, um, I just went down the line and began to fill the blanks in. Watch this. Enosh, his name means mortal. And mortal in the Webster's Dictionary, uh, it means to be subject unto death. Mortality, it means to be subject unto death. Kenan, his name means fixed. Webster's Dictionary simply means it was prepared beforehand. Um, Mahaya Hill, what I did with Mahaya Hill, it says Mahaya Hill, he was a praiser of God. Well, I couldn't do anything in the Webster's Dictionary with that, but other than, you know, he would be a praiser of God. Jared, Jared, his name means descending, and descending means that would come down, or that will come down. That's what it means to descend. And the reason Jared is given this name is, um, if you get into the book of Enoch and stuff like that, it talks about how the angels descended in the days of Jared. It's when they came down. Um, Enoch, his name actually means dedicated. He was dedicated to God and what he had done. And because of that, you know, he was translated. So he was the seventh from Adam that was translated, which actually speaks about you and I. After one, two, three, four, Four, five, six thousand years, you know, at the beginning of the Sabbath, you and I will be translated too. That's what we're looking for, the coming of the Messiah. Now, Methuselah, they all knew in Noah's day, um, or in their days, that, you know, Methuselah was special because it says they knew that when he dies, it comes. Now, what's pretty amazing, it's believed that Methuselah lived all the way up into the flood, right to the end. And, um, but his name has another meaning. They said when he dies, it comes, but also he was a man of a javelin, or man of a rod. So what I did was, I just put over here on the side, um, he, Yeshua, would be our king and rule with a rod of iron. Now, you might ask, where did I get that from? But I'm going to keep going and I'm going to explain it to you. 
uh, Lamech. Lamech, you know, his name means a wild man. If you go back into Genesis, you'll find out that he was a wild man and, and certain things. And I put right here, Satan would be loose for a short time, which I got on the side right here, a thousand years, and I'll explain that. And then Noah, his name means rest. You know, and I put the end would come, final rest. So let me just read it to you, just reading out what it says. If we look at it just from... Um, how God has encrypted or hidden things. It's all about Jesus. This is in Genesis chapter 5. This is the 10 generations from Adam to Noah. And um, you get this, that, you know, the, the last man, Adam, or the second man, Adam, Jesus, was to be set in a position to be subject unto death. It was prepared beforehand that he would be a praiser of God that would come down. Jared means descending, that would come down. Um, he would be, and we would be translated. So let me read it again. Messed up. Um, the second man, Adam, Jesus, or the last man, Adam, Jesus, was to be set in a position to be subject unto death. It was prepared beforehand. He would be a praiser of God that would come down and we would be translated. He would be our king and rule with a rod of iron. Satan would be loosed for a short time and the end would come final rest. And we know that Jesus is the first and he's the last. He's the first man, Adam, and he's the last. Well, how is he the last? Um, you know, with Noah in the ten generations. You know, first thing I thought about is that, you know, he's the word of God made flesh. And ten, you know, goes back to when God gave us the Torah. You know, the, the actually 613 commandments. But the Ten Commandments uh, that he had given us was his word. And it goes back to that this is actually his word. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 that we're, stri that we're to strive to enter into that rest. And that rest is Jesus Christ. So I want to just tell you how I filled in this last little piece. Um, the front part is pretty easy. Um, the second man, Adam, Jesus, was to be set in a position to be subject unto death. It was prepared beforehand. He would be a praiser of God uh, that would come down and we would be translated. Pretty cut and dry right here. Because in this, the rest is filled in like this. We know that we have to go through 6,000 years of man's history and then the Lord comes. And, uh, and we're going to be, you know, dedicated, we're dedicated to him, we'll be translated. But um, the Bible says that when he comes, Jesus Christ sets up his kingdom and rules with a rod of iron for 1,000 years. So if we know that, you know, from Adam to Enoch, you know, we got the 6,000 years plus 7, it just fits that... Um, Methuselah being uh, the man of a javelin or man of a rod, we know that when Jesus comes back, he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. And also we know Lamech, a wild man. Well, we, if we go into the Bible, we'll find out um, that, you know, Satan is the wild man. He is the crazy one. Um, in fact, if you remember this, it says that, um, you know, when... Um, when Abraham had two sons, he had, first was Ishmael. And Ishmael actually means, you know, God said that Ishmael would be a wild man and his hand would be against everyone. And that's basically uh, who Satan is. And then we know for a fact that Noah, um, his name means rest. And, um, and we know that in Hebrews chapter 4 that Jesus is our rest. So if we go back all the way to the very beginning, you know, in Genesis chapter 5, this is the order in which it's given. You know, Adam to Noah, the ten generations, um, God has encrypted in it, you know, what's going to happen um, through our lifetime. But anyway, I want you guys, uh, I'm about to come back with another video, and um, it's on a format of something like this, so uh, look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.